In this lesson, we're checking out two advanced ways of playing ghost notes, either preceding a backbeat or straight after a backbeat using either the downstroke or the upstroke. Things like this, right? Preceding an accent or preceding a backbeat. That's using an upstroke and a bit of a whip. Or the opposite, a downstroke, so straight after a backbeat. All right, so let's have a look. This is uh, using the upstroke. And this is straight after. This is using a downstroke. So before we get into upstrokes and downstrokes, let's talk a little bit to start with about the rebound stroke and just rebound from a drum. So one of the first things that we teach a new student is the rebound stroke and it's a fantastic technique because we produce the down motion and the stick gives us the up motion. So in a sense, the drum is doing half the work for us and it's a fantastic stroke. All I've got to do is guide the stick back. It just pivots in my fulcrum and comes straight back. Right, that's the rebound stroke. And if I play it over and over, all I'm doing is playing down and the drum is throwing it back. Awesome technique, definitely learn that first. But you'll notice after the first stroke, it comes straight back, right? Which means that the next stroke is probably gonna be the same volume. And that's not what we want in this instance. When we're playing an accent, if we know, and of course I was rim shotting as well, which makes it a little bit harder because it's a bit of a different feel when you rim shot a drum. But if we know that we want the next note to not be the same volume, in, in this instance we want it to be a ghost note, then the rebound stroke doesn't really work. Okay, yes of course the sticks are rebounding, but we're not really using quote unquote the rebound stroke. So let's have a look at what we want from the side. What we're doing is we're going to play a rim shot, and then we want a soft ghost note. Yeah, and you can see it's a really wide dynamic contrast between the two notes. So how do I facilitate that with my technique? Well, instead of letting the stick rebound back, you can see it's pivoting in the fulcrum up and down. Instead of doing that, all I'm gonna do at the end of the stroke is simply not let my fingers off the stick and then the stick won't come back, right? So then I'm then in position to just drop the stick and get that ghost note, right? So that is actually what's going on inside the hand when I play this technique, right? So this is for going loud, soft, and you don't even have to, you don't even have to rim shot, you can just do it. We're using the downstroke. Instead of, instead of the stick coming all the way back, and you can really see from the top here how much it pivots in the fulcrum, okay? So not that, this. And again, you can see my technique is still fairly relaxed. I mean, it's, it's secure, but I'm not jammed tight. I'm not like white knuckle gripping onto the stick, right? You definitely don't want to do that because then at that point, your hand is kind of acting as a shock absorber and you're going to take all this shock into your wrist and that's really not good. All you're doing is not letting the stick come back. Okay, so that's the technique. And then you just roll that out to a rim shot and then you're in position. Okay, so coming up, rim shot, then I just pivot at the wrist, or if I'm doing, you know, if I'm doing multiple notes, then I might also use some fingers as well, and that depends on the speed too. So once you've got your left hand around that concept, you want to build it into a beat. So just start really simple. You can even just start with quarter notes if you want, and just be going... So subdivide one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So again, quarter notes. Three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. Eighth notes. Right, so this is a really good one to be able to play. You notice in the previous lesson, if you haven't checked it out, there's a link below. Um, we were basically looking at how to play ghost notes at all, right? getting the sound um, contrast between the, the ghost notes and the accents. And we basically built up a beat, something like this. Well, now we can add in the ghost note after the backbeat. Right, 2E, 4E. All 
Okay, so that's playing a ghost note with the downstroke straight after an accent or straight after a backbeat. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the lesson. We'd really love you to scroll down and click the free trial link below for I Can Play Drums Pro. Over 704K lessons, 2,000 backing tracks, regular student reviews, and a thriving community that you'll be welcomed into. You won't be charged until after the trial period, and you can cancel at any time before then. We'd love to see you there. Back to the show. Let's now check it out, the ghost note before a backbeat. So one E and a two, three E and a four, okay? So what we're doing there is the complete opposite technique. So again, upstrokes, another really important technique, really important that you know how to play both downstrokes and upstrokes, all right? So whereas a downstroke, you play a downstroke when you know that after your accents, you need to immediately play soft notes. Well, upstrokes are the exact opposite. If you're already playing soft notes, and you know that you immediately need to next play loud notes, then you're gonna come up straight after the soft note, get in position, and then load up, all right? And that's what we're doing here. So it's soft and come up. And I highly recommend that you just practice that, right? It's like a pull up or a pull out. And the trick is to still keep this note soft. Yes, yeah, sometimes we're like, the volume comes up and that's not what you want. You want it to be soft, whoop, soft, and immediately up without buzzing like I just did a second ago. Okay, so from there, I'm up and then I can come down. So, in the beginning, you can practice it as eighth notes if you want. Upstroke, accent, upstroke, accent. All right, let's have a look from the side. This is what it looks like. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. Again, so I'm playing my soft note immediately comes up and then come down and then I simply just rim shot as well now what's interesting is if you've never done that before with your left hand on the snare it's going to feel like a, a like a brand new technique but there's a good chance your right hand's been doing it on the hi-hat for ages right if you've ever played this right or you've ever played the shuffle, the triple version of it, right? Or, okay, then that's the same technique that the right hand's doing. The soft loud, soft loud, soft loud, soft loud, soft loud, soft loud. It's the same technique, it's just with the other hand, and of course you're throwing in a rim shot on top of it, okay? But it's essentially the same thing, yep. Once you can do the technique, build it into a basic beat. And again, you might just wanna start with quarter notes, that would look something like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Make sure you're subdividing, like I was just doing then. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. And then eighth notes would sound like this. Okay, so you might want to um, also bring that over to your shuffles. Okay, so we talked about doing that with the right hand. Well, this is a great thing to be able to do in a regular shuffle. Maybe your right hand's on the right cymbal. Or. And I'm finding there that I'm actually doing it with both hands on two and four. So both hands are coming up and digging in. So it's like one, a two, a three, a four. So there you go, guys. That's a more advanced way of playing your ghost notes with your rim shots using either a downstroke or an upstroke to get a ghost note after a backbeat or before a backbeat. Enjoy. Be sure to click the link below for instant access to your free seven-day trial of I Can Play Drums Pro. Thank you.